Hey, welcome to our first episode of Lessons with the Legends. I'm your host, Peter Freeman from Crunch Time Coaching. And today we're going to be taking a look at John McEnroe's touch game. We're going to be breaking down his touch game. And he'll be playing Ivan Lendl at the 1985 Volvo Masters. We're going to take a look at how he used touch to win a lot of points in that match. Hope you hope you like this concept. Uh, comment below. Let us know what you think. Uh, I had a lot of fun making it. I hope you're going to have a lot of fun watching it. So let's go into my coaching app and get started. All right, and this first point we're going to do is we're going to take a look at Mac and how he uses his hands to neutralize a point and then eventually turn it back on offense. And it's a play that I wish a lot more recreational players would do. Typically when they get in trouble, they tend to flail and swipe at the ball. But look at Johnny here. He's in big trouble. And notice how as he hits it, he just basically puts his racket out and touches the ball, and he knows the right amount of racket at angle. You can see it's slightly up there to bring it just deep enough to give him time to get back to the middle and work and and stay in the point. Now, again, here's another ball. Again, look how his racket is just basically there touching it, pushing it deep, and that shot right redirecting, and that shot right there and as we know, Lendl could crush the ball, stabilize the point to where the next shot, now look, John is actually inside the baseline, and then he does what I call a shade move. He sees that, okay, I've hurt this player now, and notice how McEnroe just stays and leaves about 80% of the court open on his forehand side, but he, he's okay with that because he can see Lendl is stretching here. He's desperately stretching to get this ball. So he knows Lendl's not going to do anything too offensive. And so McEnroe, who didn't have uh, the greatest for him, but in my mind was uh, very underrated because he could really redirect that thing, take it on the rise, and get the ball on you very quickly here, much like Federer, except for Federer's forehand's way better, let's face it. But you see where McEnroe is now. Now he's inside that court, redirecting that shot inside out forehand and that's one example of how Macro uses his beautiful hands to finish off and win a point that he really should have lost. Okay, let's take a look at what everybody loves, the Macro drop shots. Now, this is just crazy, this drop shot here. Watch how Macro comes. Uh, in this match, I noticed he also did a lot of serving into the body, uh, making it hard for Lendl to really pound the returns. But Lendl gets the ball low here. And watch how John comes here and opens up his frame and puts the ball right over the net. A sweet drop shot. We're going to get to watch this uh, in slow motion close up here. This is a beautiful shot from a very old video, but you can see it really nice. What I, what I want you to get out of this is with the drop shot, now he does this extreme because he's got such beautiful hands. So you want to take a little bit of this idea. He's maybe over-exaggerating what you and I can do. That's why he was, you know, such, people would call him a genius, but the key to hit a good drop shot, notice his racket head um, pretty even with the ball, maybe a little under it, and as he hits it, now look how it falls way back behind. So that's one of the things, I actually just made a drop shot video, that's one of the things I pointed out, when you hit a drop shot, a lot of times your racket head is going to go backwards and towards the fence back here, if you, if you were playing on a uh, you know, court with a fence on it. So see that? That's how you kind of take the sting off. This is what John's doing with the ball. He's taking off the sting by dropping his racket head back, and then we can see that ball actually have nice net clearance, but it's just so well executed that Lendl, who's pretty darn fast and fit, just stood there and watched the ball. Okay, let's take a look at a couple more uh, spectacular shots by McEnroe. The lesson in this point is all about quick recognition. Look how this serve goes from being trouble right into the hip of McEnroe. Again, his beautiful hands. Notice how he doesn't panic or react. He basically is keeping that racket head nice and stable and still uh, while still being fairly relaxed. Now, what he notices is, oh, this actually turned out better than I thought. I'm seeing Lendl having to lunge down and go to a slice. Anytime you see your opponent having to take a big lunge out to one particular side, that's usually a good sign that they're not going to really come with it with a lot of pace. And then also, he has uh, a slice position. He's got a, if you notice the way his preparation is, 
Lendl here is set up where he's going to slice the ball. This is another thing that a lot of recreational players don't notice is what's going to be coming back, topspin or slice. McEnroe sees in the preparation that Lendl is going to chip the ball. So notice what McEnroe does right away. He starts charging in. Look how low Lendl is right now. And John takes this ball out of the air again, goes right into the drop shot. Look how the racket head comes down low and keeps going lower and kicks that ball up. But again, Lendl is running the wrong way, and that ball just, oh my goodness, that is crazy. Take a look at that ball. Watch, watch, watch what the ball does when it bounces, guys. This is just, oof, that's some nasty stuff. We're going to take a look at one more drop shot from the master of touch, Mr. Mack. Before we go to the next shot, I did just find this part right here. Look how he's coming in. Again, nice, stable, not panicking, touching the ball. The racket head continues to go low. That's the key. And look how it brings the ball up. Now, you do have to have really good hands to try a drop shot running in that far. But look how, look how the drop shots, if you do them right, they actually go up quite high. They've got... You don't want to go too high because that does give your opponent time to run in. But the way it's done here, it was executed perfectly because it just dropped barely over the net. Um, but that is another good key to a drop shot, especially when you're going low. You've got to lift the ball up a little bit. So watch this point here. This is a great example of uh, something that happens a lot in recreational tennis where there's a ball very close to the net. Off to one side, as you can see, the ball is now over here, and McEnroe is having to deal with a pretty tricky shot. I notice lots of recreational players, they just kind of put the ball forward, and then they tend to get passed by their opponent uh, when they leave the court too open, because look how far John is on this side. So an, an angle with an angle is a great play. Now, the way to handle this technically is to start to build your racket and just push it forward, make it like this to where now your strings are facing that way, and you just tap the ball there. It's, it's not as hard as you might think. So rather than having your rack head traditionally off here to the side is what we usually think, and then hitting the ball, you're not going to be able to create much of an angle. You just push your rack head here forward, and all you got to do is just tap the ball that way. Okay, so McEnroe, even though it looks like an angle, he's just simply uh, creating a different angle with his racket head preparation and then literally pushing the ball forward. That's what it turns out to be to create that angle, if that makes sense. And then you can see Lendl's not there. Now, a great way to practice this is to actually have, let's say you got Mac on this side, you got Lendl on this side, you bring Lendl over here. They're both in front of the net. You get a tennis ball, you put it on the net, and you let the ball drop to one side or the other. And then you and your opponent have to create these incredible angles to win a point. And that's a great way to develop skills where you can hit these shots pretty easily, make them look routine the way Mac did there. Okay, let's take a look at our final example. Before we do that, I have to show you how far the between the leg shot has come. McEnroe, after the point, just for fun, tries to hit in between the leg shot, and it just looks terrible. <laughs> it's like... Fetter is in no danger, I'll tell you that. Okay, let's watch our last point. Okay, last point, and this was one of my favorite shots to do as a kid because I, I watched so much Macro going up, and, and there's just such a great lesson here. So Macro serves, he's into the court, he sees the ball hits the net, is going to land short. Now, he's in that continental grip, guys, so he's in a volley grip here. His racket head is high. It's up. And uh, with his continental grip, the way Macro was, he, he could either come under it and then brush it with topspin, or he could chip the ball. So what he does here is he chips the ball. So he comes from high to low, very lightly, notice opening up the strings more, very delicate, bringing the... Uh, deflection away is a great way to take power off the ball. So the way he's taking sting off the ball is in, rather than really pushing through the ball to hit a nice deep approach shot, he's going to take the pace and deaden the pace by continuing to drop the racket head down and then bringing it off to the side a bit. So that helps to take the sting off the ball, redirect it, now, look what he does here. Notice how he's watching Lendl run. So he's seen 
what kind of position Lendl's in. If anything, he's going to move a little bit this way. But notice how he doesn't close hard. This is another big mistake I see people do off drop shots. They'll run to the net real hard, get right in front of their opponent, and then their opponent runs here and then will lob the ball over their head and they can't get it. So this, this is uh, kind of like a little trick that not a lot of people know about. He stands there and watches it, basically traps Lendl. So now Lendl, if, if he's going to have to hit up. Lendl has to hit up in this position. He doesn't have much power. And uh, Macro could quickly close on this down the line. Maybe he's leaving the line a little too open for my comfort. But McEnroe, uh, pretty quick guy. So, you know, if I were you, I might be a little bit more positioned here, but not going in too much. Because if the ball lands in front of Mac anywhere from here to here, he can then just run up to it and tap it into the open court. So even if this ball comes back, this is a great setup play, especially bringing people to the net who don't like to come to the net. Lendl does not like to come to the net. So McEnroe, again, thinking about his opponent going, Lendl's not comfortable. He loves passing me from the baseline, scorching me there. But, you know, I like to get in these little cat and mouse duels with him. So if Lendl even if he makes a shot, which he doesn't, you see how McEnroe started to, interesting, notice how he started to close on the line like I talked about. So kind of almost maybe a little bit here, McEnroe baiting him to go for the line. And at the last second, he goes, oh, you're probably going to go to the line. And then look, see if Lendl would even made that down the line, look where McEnroe is and open, okay? So right as the person hits this ball, you're, you're most likely thinking you're probably going to have to most likely close forward in some way to either pick the ball off in the air or a ball that's going to drop in front of you. So there you go. That's how Johnny Mac masters the touch. Hopefully you like this, guys. And if you like this video, you know what I'd love you to do right now? I would love you to smash. Let me draw a tennis racket here. Let's, let's smash on that subscribe button because if you like this uh, format, I want you to smash on the subscribe button. And uh, if you're not ready for that kind of commitment yet, as my buddy Matt says from Coffee Break Tennis, maybe just give us a little Johnny Mac. Whoops. Whoops. What happened there? Didn't mean that. Maybe just give us a Johnny Mac touch like. You know, if you like this video, the little throwback. And then comment below. Uh, what do you think about this? Do you like this kind of uh, going back to the legends and, and learning some lessons from the legends? you like learning lessons from the legends? If you do, comment below and let me know, yes, Pete, I like this video. Do more like this. And let me know what player we should look at and what shot we should learn. All right? So... Hopefully you love this, and we'll see you on future videos.